he's still cute. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Espoir Duvid, and today I'm very excited because a game I really, really like has gotten a major update. I've played this game before, and there should be a link to it somewhere, like either on the screen or in the description. But since it's been so long, I think I'm going to play it from the beginning because even I, even I forget what happens. So today I'd like to play the major update of Duality. Meld. Poopy. Excrement! Why did it need to start pouring now, on the very day that you didn't have enough money for a taxi? You run as fast as you can, using your arms as a very poor shield against the vicious rain. <laughs> it's like the sea is being emptied over your head. This isn't going to work. You're getting soaked. You're going to have to find shelter and wait until the rain stops if you don't want to catch a cold. The flower shop ahead of you is displaying a very obvious open sign on its window. That will do. <laughs> Actually, that would be really sweet. Oh no, it's raining. Let me just duck into this flower shop. Oh no, a cute man. You open the door and rush inside. The pleasant smell of flower perfume hits you as you let the door close behind you and pat at your wet hair. Yeah, it's already drenched. But you still have one layer of clothing beneath your coat that remains dry. A small sigh escapes you as you look around. A large variety of plants surround you, from colorful roses to potted little succulents. At least you ended up in a nice shop. Oh. Pretty bad weather today, huh? Your attention shifts to the register a little further ahead. A boy with blonde hair is standing behind it. He gives you a shy little smile. Oh, hi, yeah. Sorry for bursting in like that. I was just trying to find some shelter. It's really no trouble. Feel free to look around while you're here. His smile becomes a little wider, more suitable for customer service. He is pretty cute. That, that's what I'm thinking. Now that you're taking a good look at him, he's pretty gosh darn cute. You begin to scan the flowers on display. The arrangements aren't half bad. Some of them you haven't even seen anywhere else. You'd often walk past this place on your way to work, but you never took the time to come inside. Perhaps it wouldn't hurt to get a small potted plant. It could liven up your apartment a little. Hey, um... You glance at the employee's chest, where his name is displayed. Keith, might I get a potted plant? I'm not sure what to pick. Have you got any recommendations? Maybe something that won't die easily? His eyes light up immediately. Of course! A few good options would be succulents, such as aloe vera. Peace lilies are also nice if you want something a bit less spiky. And spider plants are another popular opinion for beginners. He points to each plant as he speaks their names. Then he proceeds to explain how to take care of them. If you looked a little timid before, all of that was gone now. You knew employees were supposed to be kind and helpful. But Keith seemed genuinely passionate about the subject. He practically radiated happiness when he spoke about plants. Oh, Um, I don't think this has anything to do, but aloe vera has many medicinal properties that I like, so I will get an aloe vera. Are they easy to grow? You tell Keith your choice, and he happily nods in agreement. Have you had trouble taking care of plants before? I can give you tips on other species too, if you like. Yeah, a little bit. Thanks for the offer. I'll just look after this one for now, but if it's a success, I'll come by for more. My place does look a bit dull without any plants. By the time you pay for your plant, the rain has stopped. Keith hands you your new plant, and you're about to turn and leave. Um, well, I mean, I mean, yeah, I think he's cute, but I don't just go hand it out my number to just anybody. Hmm. Oh, okay. Ask for his number. Before you do so, you decide you could try your luck with this cute florist. Hey, um, this might sound kind of sudden. Don't feel pressured to agree or anything, but can I get your number? <laughs> Aww. A small blush spreads over his cheeks. It makes him look even more adorable. Oh, <laughs> I'm flattered. His expression turns from flustered to sad as he avoids your gaze. Aww. What's the matter, baby? 
don't take this the wrong way. I, I think you're good looking and you seem like a nice person, but having my number wouldn't be a very good idea. That's a weird way to reject someone. It is a little disheartening, but you don't want to pressure him. Ah, that's fine then. Thanks for the help with the plant. Have a nice day. You offer a smile to let him know you weren't mad and wouldn't hold a grudge. The timid smile from before returns to his face. You too. You don't waste any more time, in case the rain starts again. Better get home fast. Put your little plan out in the rain and give him a little drink. But as you exit the shop, you suddenly feel a chill spread through your body. Is it because your hair got soaked? No. You feel... odd. Through the shop's window, you see Keith. He's staring right back at you, but something about him is different from before. His smile isn't there, and his eyes look off somehow. <laughs> Maybe you're just imagining things. It's a little far to properly see his expression. He was very sweet to you earlier. You shouldn't think ill of him like this. You shake away the thoughts and continue your walk home. Ah! Ah! The next day, you're headed to work on the same route you always take. The sky is dull gray and the air is chilly, which makes you glad you dressed a little warmer this morning. Did you bring an umbrella? Perhaps that's why the streets are so empty. This time, you make sure to take an umbrella with you. Good on ya! You stop at a crosswalk, waiting for the green light. As you do so, you notice someone on the other side of the street. Normally, you wouldn't pay the stranger any mind, but something catches your eye. Oh no, he's cute! He's like punk rock cosplayer cute! Does he have blue spots on his face? Is it bruises? Or perhaps makeup? They look a bit too bright to be bruises. The light turns green, and you begin to cross the road. So does the other person. As he grows closer, you find yourself unable to look away. He's just so cool looking! The blue spots aren't the only unusual thing about him. His eyes are large, frozen in a sort of widened look. One side of his mouth stretches up his cheek in a squiggly line, creating an unnerving smirk. His eyebrows are curved upwards, as if he were in pain. He notices you staring, and grins just as the two of you pass each other. You could swear you see sharp teeth for a split second. Eh. A familiar chill runs down your spine. Just a cosplayer, you tell yourself. A very convincing one. But strangely enough, you can't help but feel like you've seen him before. It's almost like I played this game almost a year ago. <laughs> That's odd. Someone with a face like that wouldn't be easy to forget. Maybe you've seen him somewhere without all that makeup. You eventually arrive at your workplace and forget about the strange person for the rest of the day, choosing to focus on your work instead. It's not a very eventful day. You receive a few calls, but nothing too stressful or complicated. Your annoying colleague, Jacob, who works at the desk near yours, goes on and on about some party he wanted you to attend, and why you should have. <laughs> you try to tune him out and enjoy the slow day. Several hours later, you're standing in the elevator, tired and ready to head home on a well-deserved rest. You say goodbye to a few co-workers on your way out. As you exit the building, you find someone leaning against the wall by the entrance, arms crossed. Hey. It's the guy you saw on the crosswalk. The grin he gives you is just as creepy as the one from earlier today. Did he follow you to work? For how long has he been standing there, waiting? He's looking at you as if he's expecting something. Can I help you? Sure you can. You can give me your number. Um, well, I mean, if you're gonna, appro if you're gonna approach me like that, n no, no, honey, no, that's too creepy, no. I mean, you're absolutely cool looking, but no, you, not e barely a hi, hello. Sorry, but I'm gonna have to say no. You hurry past him, hoping he won't follow. It doesn't seem like he does. There's no sign of him for the rest of the way. You get home and unlock your door. The apartment is just as you left it. Except for one small detail. You notice a slight breeze as you take off your coat. Sir! 
That's odd. All the windows are supposed to be closed. Why is this ominous music playing? A knot forms in your throat as you begin to look around, stepping carefully in case something might jump out at you from the darkness. As you turn the corner, dread spreads through your body. The light in your kitchen is on, and the door is cracked open. <gasps> how dare you? You better not be eating my Funyuns! I wonder how many jokes I'm going to reuse in this playthrough. You consider grabbing a weapon, but you don't really own anything that could serve as such, other than the knives in the kitchen, that is. You can get creative. That play right there, that could be a weapon. That lamp? Deadly. A part of you tells you that you might have forgotten to turn off the light when you left. Don't panic just yet. You begin to take a few more careful steps towards the kitchen and cautiously push the door open further. You find him there, the man who asked for your number, leaning against the counter, casually inspecting his nails. The window is wide open. Sir, How dare you! There's something different about him this time. His entire skin has become blue, and the squiggly lines now stretch from both sides of his mouth. Ooh. The dark blue eyes have become purple, and he looks like he needs some sleep. Welcome home, Espoir. You start to back away as fear sprouts in your chest. How did he get in? And so fast, too. You could have sworn you just left him behind. What are you doing in my apartment? Just thought I'd say hi and introduce myself. You didn't really give me a chance, you know. It was kind of cold. Yeah, well, you come up to me and say, Hey, can I get your number? Not even a hi my name is or I know you from wherever. How am I supposed to know this game is called Duality? Your back hits the wall as you begin to feel around for the door opening. The intruder looks amused by your panic. Am I that scary looking? Don't worry. I won't do anything as long as you don't provoke me. The name's Tenebris. He pushes himself away from the counter and begins to move towards you. Like a cool guy in his cool leather jacket. Stay back! Tenebris stops and frowns. You initially think it's thanks to your warning, but he then brings a hand to his head and lets out a slight groan. For fluff's sake, not now. He holds his head in his hands and digs his fingers into his hair. Go away! You're not sure if he's talking to you, or if he's just insane. Maybe both. I would think he's insane, but then I would have pity, like, Are you good, fam? I know you broke into my house, but are you okay? You're about to take the opportunity to flee, but the sight before you keeps you in place. His appearance begins to change. The blue skin turns rosy, the squiggly lines revert back into a normal-shaped mouth, and the eyes shrink down. Oh. Oh, hi. By the time he lowers his hands and looks at you, he's turned into a different person. A person you've seen before. Keith? Oh, Keith. Uh, I'm so sorry. This shouldn't have happened. It's all my fault. You're so stunned you can barely form a cohesive tape. They can't even form a comprehensive sentence. Are you in some kind of messed up dream? How? What? What the heck just happened? I. It. I. It's a bit hard to explain. He looks at you with unease. Are you going to call the police? I don't know. I probably should. I want an explanation. Do you have some kind of double personality? He shakes his head. No, it's more complicated than that. He's been with me since I was born. He's like a separate entity. There's no way that's possible. Well, you just saw a switch. And you still haven't had time to process what you just witnessed. All right, let's say I believe you. What reason do I have not to call the cops on the guy who broke into my apartment? I promise it won't happen again. It's my fault. I was tired and he was able to get full control when I'm exhausted. You stare at him for a moment. He looks genuinely guilty, and that pitiful look he's giving you is kind of convincing. But then again, would it really be a good idea to let him off so easily? Oh, I won't call the police. Not this time. You, you got, got some, some splendid, do. do A small sigh escapes you. 
You might be out of your mind letting this guy off the hook so easily, but for now, you're not going to alert the authorities. All right, I believe you. The relief on his face is immense. But that doesn't make me any less shocked. What did you mean when you said he's some kind of entity? Is he dangerous? He isn't any more dangerous than any other person. I promise, I'll never let him do anything bad to you. Is, is this why you didn't give me your number? I see. You did actually mention it wouldn't be a good idea to be close to you when we first met. Is that why? Keith gives you a sheepish smile. Yes, kind of. I would have loved to give you my number, but I didn't want to drag you into my mess of a life if things went well between us. I mean, double boyfriends. You sound like you're speaking from experience. <laughs> I am. Ah, but I should go now. I'm still bothering you at such a late hour. I'm sorry for everything, again. He's starting to make his way past you out of the kitchen. Hey fam, chill. Chill a little bit. It's okay. I'm, I'm not calling the police, so you can, you can calm down. Oh, would it be a problem if I asked you to stay a bit longer? Keith stops in his tracks and looks at you with wide eyes. You want me to stay? Are you sure? You nod. Only if you want to, of course. Yes, he bursts out happily. Then a pink hue appears on his cheeks, and he lets out an embarrassed chuckle. <laughs> I'm, I mean, sure. He's positively adorable. All right, great. Make yourself comfortable, then. You lead him to sit down in your kitchen and offer something to drink. I is this really okay? I'm kind of a stranger who broke into your house. He nervously fiddles with the glass. You sit across from him, setting your arms on the table as you face him. Well, I'm not afraid of you, and I think you're cute, so I'm giving you a second chance. Besides, it wasn't you who broke in, right? Technically. That gets him to smile in a way that he hasn't done until now. Oh no! <laughs> you think I'm cute? You're quite nice looking too. Although, normally, I'd pick something a little more romantic for a first date. Hmm, true. But we'll settle for a short and odd first date for now. Alright. In that case, I'd love to get to know you better. Tell me about yourself. Well, as much as I do love meeting new people, I'm not that interesting. I'm more of a stay-inside person. I'm an old lady who takes pictures of my cat and works in my garden. Oh, I'm like that too. I really like curling up with a good book when I get home from work. What about you, though? I would love to know more about you. You prop your chin against your joined hands as you gaze at him with a big smile. Oh, I'm just... His sentence is interrupted by a yawn. Oh, gosh, right. You said you were really tired earlier. I'm sorry. I should have let you go home and rest. Ah, uh, but I'd love to stay longer. You said it's a date and all. Well, we'll have... We'll have another one. Hold on, I'll be right back. You hurry out of the kitchen to find a pen and some paper. You then return with your number written on it and hand it to Keith. He beams as he takes it. Oh, Thank you. This time, he finally gets up to leave for good. The smile never leaves his face. You see him to the door. It's dark out, so be careful. I will. Don't worry. Good night, Espoir. Your gaze stays on the door for a while longer after he's closed it behind him. Looks like in the end, you still scored a date with the flower boy. <laughs> a wide grin spreads over your face. You can't wait to see him again. Yippee! Date two! A new day starts and the weekend along with it, but your mind is stuck on the guy from last night. You still have so many questions. If you hadn't exchanged a few messages with him after he'd left, you'd think it had all been a dream. It's exciting! <laughs> you can't believe your luck. How many people get to experience something crazy like this? The excitement is making you restless. What will happen next, you wonder? You have a light breakfast and decide to go on a walk to settle down a little. Better yet, perhaps you can drop by the flower shop. <laughs> Perhaps Keith will be there again. The weather is nice today, somewhat warm for the middle of autumn, but pleasant nonetheless. It's not a long walk to the shop. It's funny how close by it is, yet you've never paid it much attention. 
The flower perfume hits you as soon as you approach it. A girl with bright green hair is tending to some of the plants outside. You think you've seen her once or twice before on your way to work. Since she looks busy and you're not here to ask about plants, you walk past her and push the door to the shop open. The bell clinks and clanks above your head. Keith is standing behind the counter, adorably. Only this time he's not alone. A middle-aged woman in a pink coat is grasping her purse very tightly as she speaks in an aggravated tone. Uh-oh. This is unheard of. You're refusing to take my order? I'm sorry, ma'am. It's not that we don't want to do it. We simply can't get all of it done in such a short amount of time. Keith is doing a great job at staying calm and speaking politely, but the woman is having none of it. She starts to raise her voice. Don't you raise my- don't you raise your voice at my future, boo? Do you understand that I need these decorations by the end of next week? If my daughter's wedding gets ruined, it's going to be your fault. Oh my goodness, ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. He's doing his best. You can't just stand by while this lady yells at the poor guy and makes unreasonable requests. Excuse me, for how long are you going to argue like this? It sounds like your request isn't possible. She looks even more furious as she turns to you, her shoulders stiff and eyes wide. How rude! Mind your business! This has nothing to do with you! You mad, lady? You mad? You're not the only person trying to buy flowers. I think it is my business if you plan on standing here screaming for God knows how long. Why, you- Uh-oh. Hey, lady, scram! The woman is cut short by a much deeper voice than Keith's. Uh-oh. She turns around, startled. Her eyebrows shoot up into her bangs, and her mouth falls open when she sees a pair of wide, red eyes. Ooh, and rows of sharp teeth greeting her in place of Keith's gentle face. She lets out a yelp and takes several steps back until her heel hits one of the potted plants being displayed. Oh, he's so cute in his work uniform, but also, oh no! You imagine that it's probably what you look like when you saw Tenebris standing in your apartment. Watching him scare the heck out of this rude woman is somewhat satisfying, though. Some kind of whine comes out of the woman's throat, something akin to a wounded cat. She then quickly hurries out of the shop, pale as a ghost. We meet again. Oh, hi. Uh, sorry for breaking into your home the other day. I don't really get how human rules work sometimes. Keith said I messed up. Aww, he don't know stuff. So, you didn't know? I hope you don't mind me asking, but what are you exactly? He's about to respond, but he gets distracted by something behind you. You turn and see the girl with green hair through the window. She's about to return inside. There's no time right now. I can explain if you come by again when Keith finishes his shift at 2 p.m. All right. You watch his features return to their original shape as the blue fades from his skin. The switch is just as hypnotizing to watch as the first time, and it's still hard to comprehend that it's even possible. The other employee comes in and stops at your side. The tag on her chest reads, Melissa. Is everything all right? I saw a lady leave the shop, looking kind of agitated. It's fine. It's not Keith's fault. She was just being difficult. Keith rubs the back of his neck as he gives you a grateful smile. Don't worry about it, Melissa. She was just upset that we couldn't get her order done by next week. It was a really big one. Oh, that's a pity. Melissa looks between you and Keith. She ultimately settles on you and offers a friendly smile. Anything we can do for you? No, I just came by to see Keith. I won't keep you guys any longer, though. Have a nice day. You give them both a small wave as you turn to leave. There's a hint of disappointment in Keith's expression when he waves back. Aww. You too. I'll see you around, Espoir. You continue your walk for some time before returning home. Then you find a few things to occupy yourself until 2 p.m. You're curious about what Tenebris is going to tell you. Hours later, you're standing in front of the shop again. Keith is no longer there, neither is Tenebris. You ask Melissa, the girl from before, whether he finished his shift. 
She tells you that he did, and that he said he'd be back to meet you in a few minutes. As you wait, and luckily not for long, you hear footsteps approaching fast. Tenebris takes a sharp turn around the corner, nearly falling over in the process. Aww. He slows down when he sees you, and comes to a stop to catch his breath. Sorry for making you wait. I ran home to change clothes. Can't stand Keith's. They're always so tight and uncomfortable. Right. Sharing a body with someone else must create problems of this sort. You both look adorable in each other's clothes. It's fine. You can just text me next time. You have my number, after all. Oh, right. I've, uh, never had someone to text or call before. Kind of forgot phones could also do that. But anyway, you're here for an explanation. You want to take a walk while I do it? There's a park nearby. All right. You know the park he's talking about. It's a well-maintained place with long winding paths, right by the edge of the forest. It's likely a little crowded on a Saturday afternoon, though. People will gawk at you. It doesn't take long to reach it, and once you've chosen a path to walk down, Tenebris begins to fidget nervously with his hands. You don't try to urge him to speak, and instead let him take his time. The scenery is nice, at least. Bright yellow, orange, red, and brown leaves decorate the ground. Couples and families chat as they stroll about. Someone is playing catch with their dog. Your attention snaps back to Tenebris when he clears his throat. I'm guessing you've heard legends. About kids being stolen from their parents and replaced with something else. Something from the forest. Oh, you mean a changeling? I think I have. I'm something like that. A changeling. A fae, whatever you guys call us. We're close to nature and we don't usually get along with humans. Us changelings often integrate among you, though. By taking your forms. I was supposed to kill my host from the inside at birth and take over the body. It's kinda how I would have become a full changeling. But I failed. Now we're stuck together. Oh. You listen quietly, taking in the new information. A changeling? It does make sense, seeing how he can change the way his body works, but as far as you remember, the Fey aren't something you should be messing with. Yeah. Your eyes wander to the edge of the forest beyond a metal fence ahead of you. After all that you've witnessed, it's a tad late to still consider it impossible. It's beginning to feel like you've entered a fairy tale. Yeah, what? why did you fail? Is that common? Is that a normal thing? It's not common. It's a one-in-a-million occurrence. Normally, the human stands no chance, but Keith was different. He has a strong mind. You're beginning to make yourself accept that you're speaking to a nat supernatural entity. Yeah. The Fae are known for being unreliable tricksters. How do I know you aren't a threat to me? You could ask me. We can't lie. You hesitate before settling on a question. Are you going to harm me? As long as you don't give me a reason to protect myself, or Keith, from you, I have no intention of hurting you. You nod. You can't consider it a guarantee, but at least it's something. Even though I do find him more intriguing now, uh, you still gotta be a little bit cautious. And I'm kind of siding with Keith on this one. Even if he says he can't lie, how do you know that's true? This is the first time you've interacted with such a creature. He's definitely dangerous. I mean, those teeth are pretty impressive, friend. You're going to keep an eye on him whenever he's around. The Fae aren't to be underestimated, especially one as deceiving as a changeling. Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of their main thing. <laughs> the two of you now walk in silence. Tenebris is rubbing the back of his neck as he looks around. He's trying to avoid looking at you. What's wrong? Nothing. I just... Didn't expect to get this far. I thought you'd laugh at me, or call me a liar, or run away. I watched you and Keith switch places right before my eyes. Twice, I think. And I'm currently talking to a blue person. I don't think there's room for skepticism anymore. Skepticism. I watched you and Keith switch places right before my eyes, and I'm currently talking to a blue person. I don't think there's room for skepticism anymore. You sure seem to be taking it well, though. I'm glad. A small smile creeps onto your lips. You won't get rid of me so easily. 
get rid of you. I wasn't trying to. Your joke didn't land, apparently. Aw. I was joking. Ah, my bad, then. Still not really used to human language. The awkward silence returns. You return your attention to your surroundings. Tenebris is making a lot of head turns, and not in a good way. A few of the kids walking by even hide behind their parents, or point as they walk by. The adults mostly try to hush them, perhaps assuming he's wearing a costume, the same way you did the first time. Tenebris isn't taking all of this attention very well. He's frowning at the ground, hands stuffed in his pockets. His frown deepens with every new, Mommy, why is that guy blue? I'd forgotten there's a lot of people at the park during the daytime. Are you more used to coming here at night? Yeah. I usually go out at night in general. Today's special, I guess. Yeah, yeah, switch with Keith. That way you won't have to worry about it, friend. Why don't you switch with Keith? Since you're done explaining and the crowd seems to be stressing you out, we could go behind that tree. You can change like Superman. He looks like he's contemplating it for a moment, but his frown only deepens. I don't wanna. I rarely get time outside the body. He's been out all day. You get the feeling you've struck a nerve. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. I just wanted you to be comfortable. I'm, s I'm sorry, baby. I'm sorry. Sorry. I just wanted to help. His expression softens. It's fine. Sorry for snapping. I should probably just go home. You're right that the crowd is stressing me out. I hope my explanation made sense. I think so. It was a lot. I'll need some time to think. He nods. You both make your way back. Then, once at the park's exit, bid each other farewell. Aww. On your way home, you go over the events of today in your head. You've gotten answers, at least. Ones that make you wonder what's going to happen to you from here on. You doubt one easily goes back to a regular life after meeting and speaking to a fae in the flesh. Lost in thought, you fail to notice the man that walks out in front of you while exiting a nearby store. You still manage to stop just in time, avoiding a collision. Looking up at him, you may as well compare him to a mountain. He looks to be about 6'5", heavily built with a thick mane of wavy black hair covering his wide shoulders. He glances at you with a raised eyebrow. My bad. The man grins. It's not a friendly smile. You aren't sure what's so amusing to him, but it gives you a bad feeling. You go around him, quickening your pace. Uh-oh. That dude? Is that dude trouble? But in your haste, as you turn the corner, you end up crashing into someone else. Oh, hi. Oh, wait, is that, is that my Jacob? Is that the Jacob I work with? Whoa there. Jacob, your co-worker, grabs your arm by reflex, either to steady you or himself. Oh, God, I'm sorry. I just saw a huge guy who looked really, really cool. <laughs> no, no, I should apologize. I was distracted by Cookie and wasn't looking where I was going. You look down at the dog in question, who stares back up at you, wagging her tail. Oh, Cookie's an adorable name. Crumb, Jacob's other dog, is also at his side. But she's too busy sniffing the ground to pay you any attention. Aw, Cookie and Crumb, aw. This is the first time you've seen them in person. Although you're aware of their existence, Jacob brings them up often when he talks to you at work. Aw, it's such an adorable name for doggies. It wasn't just you. I've had some strange things happen lately. I guess it made me kind of stressed and paranoid. Weird things? Like what? You realize your mistake. Maybe you shouldn't have said that. You can't exactly tell him the truth. He'd think you're insane. But he's also the curious, insistent type. He'll likely try to get at least some form of minimal information out of you. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's let's change the subject. What, what, what are you doing in this part of the city? It's probably best that you change the subject and try to distract him with something else. Yeah! Oh, it's complicated. But, uh, I thought you live in a different area. What brings you to this part of the city? A friend lives here. He wanted me to come by and bring Cookie and Crumb with me. The furballs love him. 
He wants to get his own dog, but his girlfriend says their place is too small. They can't really afford to get a bigger one right now, so... Jacob continues to talk in great te detail about the lives of people you've never met and aren't interested in knowing about. Still, the mundane conversation makes you forget about the weird man from earlier and the sudden fear he struck in you. You eventually part ways with Jacob when he realizes it's about time he got home and fed his dogs. The little hallway of your apartment is a comforting sight when you finally make it home. It's only late afternoon, and yet exhaustion is already weighing on your mind. Might as well spend what little is left of the day relaxing. You change into something comfortable, get yourself a quick snack, and plop down on your couch to see if you can find something nice to watch. Maybe a show you haven't tried yet, but have been meaning to. Several episodes play. You're paying attention at first, but as the hours pass, the exhaustion begins to take over. Your eyelids grow heavy, and your head slips to the side. Nestled comfortably in the blankets, you drift off to sleep. Oh, Hopefully nobody sneaks in my house! Oh no! An odd scuttling sound causes you to jolt awake. The room is now dark. Can't even tell whether your eyes are open at first. When did you turn off the TV? In your state of half-asleep confusion, you can't tell whether the sound you heard was real. Groggily, you force yourself to sit up on the couch and squint as you feel around for your phone. Then comes the scuttling sound again. You freeze. It wasn't your imagination. It's coming from the corner of the room. Slowly, you turn your head. You don't see anything out of the ordinary. The plant you got from the flower shop is sitting there, undisturbed. I hope you remember to water it. Something touches your shoulder. You look around frantically. Where the heck did you leave your phone? This time, instead of shuffling, you hear a faint giggle. Oh no! It makes the hair on your neck stand. Who's there? You better be cute. Somebody whispers. You can't tell where it's coming from. Everywhere or nowhere. Pretty, Pretty little human. Ugly little human. The gods, the gods have, have forsaken, forsaken you. you. The giggling gets louder and louder. Who are you? Why are you in my home? What do you want? You scramble off of the couch and run to the light switch. The light turns on. The voices stop. The room is empty. You now realize your heart is hammering in your chest, as it should be. You stand there for a few moments, waiting for something to happen. When it doesn't, you force yourself to move. You find your phone, march to the kitchen and grab a knife, then proceed to search your entire apartment for supposed intruders. Well, yeah. <laughs> you mess with my life, you get the knife! Half an hour later, you found nothing, but you did calm down. Are you starting to hear things? Is this the part where you go insane? Perhaps the encounters you had with Tenebris have left you more shaken than you'd thought. Yes, a lot of odd things have happened lately, and your mind must be exhausted. At least, that's what you want to think. You'd rather not consider the alternative. That I'm either going crazy, or I'm being haunted. Feeling a bit silly for getting so worked up over so little, you go to your bedroom for some proper rest. Luckily, nothing wakes you up until morning this time. Mm. Day three. A week goes by. Every once in a while, when you're alone at home, you think you hear strange sounds again, like cockroaches. They appear only to die out and then reappear another night. They're always quiet, hushed. You can never tell for certain whether you're imagining things. It worries you. Are you losing your mind? You try to ignore them most of the time and blame it on the fact that your life has recently taken a turn for the unusual. You haven't had time to see the florist and the fae possessing his body again. Aww. But the three of you still spoke through messages a few times throughout the week. And whenever you spotted Keith in his shop on your way to work, you would wave and he'd wave back. Eventually, Keith got you to agree to meeting up again. 
You suggested a little restaurant where the two of you could get lunch together. Oh, I'm going mostly for Keith this time, but ten of us will get love later. You're currently getting ready for said outing and wondering what to wear. Yeah, we're going on a date. I want to especially look, look sharp and nice. You pick one of your best outfits, make sure your hair looks good, and add an accessory or two. Your doorbell rings no sooner and no later than the time you agreed on, and when you open it, Keith greets you with a big smile on his face and a pink rose in hand. Oh, he brought me a flower! Hello, Espoir. Hi, you're punctual. Of course, I wouldn't want to make you wait or rush you. And this is for you. He holds out the rose to you. Oh, tell him I, tell him I don't like it. What, what bizarro universe would that take place? Thank him profusely. Thank you. It's lovely. You take it and bring it to your face to take in the perfume. I'll put it in a vase and then we can go. It'll only take a minute. He nods. Oh. Once that's done, you lock your door and make your way out of the building. Keith at your side. The bus station isn't far. You make small talk on the way. It's all going fine, until you get on the bus and notice he keeps glancing at something behind you from time to time, with his slightly irritated expression. Hmm? You turn your head and find nothing out of the ordinary other than people on the bus. Hmm? Is something the matter? Someone kept... Ah, uh, no, it's nothing. Are you sure? Yeah. Don't worry about it. You shrug it off in the end. Mm. The restaurant is not what you expected. There are so many plants and pots on tables, climbing the walls and adorning window sills. You'd think the building doubled as a botanical garden. I want to go. Is that a, a is there a place like that? Why I want to go there? There are ficuses, small lemon trees, countless colorful orchids. Philodendrons. Philodendron. Lilies. And in a corner, you spot an impressive wisteria bonsai tree. Ooh. Keith picks a table by one of the windows, next to a row of orchids. You're compelled to pause and admire their bright colors before sitting down. The waitress comes by and sets down two menus. You pick up yours and begin to scan the options. There's plenty of dishes you're familiar with but also a few you've never tried before. Ooh. Yeah, I want to try something new. Getting something new wouldn't hurt. Maybe you'll discover your new favorite dish. Found anything you like? The food here is both good and affordable. It's hard to believe how beautiful the interior is as well. I think I did, and you're right. It's kind of impressive. How did you find it? Tenebris did. He sometimes wanders the streets in the evenings and finds all kinds of interesting little places. The waitress returns to take your order. You tell her yours, and Keith gets pork with roasted potatoes. Mmm. You can't help but notice the waitress is a little extra cheerful while speaking to Keith. She even compliments his choice of food. You try not to dwell on it, and tell yourself it could be because he's a regular. Oh, how's the plant doing, by the way? Um... She's fine. You think of the plant in your living room. For some reason, it sends a shiver down your spine. The odd sounds you've been hearing come to mind. You push them away and focus on the question. It's doing well, actually. Your instructions did help a lot. I also did a bit of research on my own. That's great to hear. You can always ask me again if you run into any problems. Did you give it a name? A name? Yes, I name all my plants, though I suppose not everyone does that. <laughs> yeah, I, I should give it a, a name. Oh, maybe I should give it a name then. What are some of yours called? He perks up cheerfully. Oh no, you, you can't stop him from talking about plants. My prayer plant is called Dimitri. I named that one, and my white orchid is called Cream Puff. Tenebrous named that one. You snicker. He named a plant Cream Puff? Maybe I should ask him to name mine too. I can ask him right now. You can talk to him when he's not out? I can. 
and he can hear my thoughts in return. What does he think, then, about my plant? He says you should name it Sherbert. I like that name, Tenebris. I like that name. You shall now be christened Sherbert. You let out another snicker. Sherbert it is, then. Silence falls between the two of you for a little while. Anyway, why don't you tell me more about yourself? I'll save Tenebris for later. Me? Well, other than being passionate about plants, I also like to read. Really? What books do you read? Mystery, fantasy, and sometimes a bit of romance. You like romance? That's rare for a guy. Is it a bad thing? No, no. Why would it be? Not at all. It's just your preference. You think so? I, um, actually read it quite a lot, but I didn't know how it'd come across. I'm not that judgmental. You read what you like, friend. It's rare that people read nowadays anyway, myself included. Sorry. I'm probably just used to being judged for it. I'm glad you aren't like that, though. What about you? Do you like reading? Yeah, yeah. I used to read. I used to read a lot. I used to read books upon books, but my attention span just kind of faltered. Yes, but I prefer playing visual novels instead of reading books. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Oh, I haven't played any. What are your favorite ones about? You make a few short summaries of your favorite visual novels. He listens intently, asking questions every once in a while, or expressing interest in certain plots and characters. So there's one where a cue ball, golf ball-headed, gray alien man comes up to you and proclaims himself your boyfriend. And there's one where you meet a dude with green hair in a library and he starts spouting off really hot poetry and then he tries to drag you into the forest. And then there's a really cool one where you're like trapped in a mansion and you have to be a maid for seven hot vampires. And there's also one where you have an imaginary friend who's actually a fae and not imaginary and he's really, really hot. And there's also one where you're, like, being stalked by an all-powerful superhero. And then there's one that takes place in a place called the Uncanny Valley, and there's a creepy guy who's stalking you who's actually a cute little one-eyed furball. And then there's one that- Get on with it! Yes! Get on with it! <laughs> <laughs> my, my, Espoir, you have quite the taste in visual novels. Oh yeah, and then I'm playing a really, really cool one called Duality. <laughs> As the conversation fades off, Keith takes on a serious expression. He presses his lips together and looks to the side before fixating his gaze on you. Espoir, can I talk to you about something? What do you need, fam? What is it? I... I know the situation is strange and uncertain. The whole thing with me and Tenebris. If you're wary or worried, you don't have to stick around. It's not too late. You can still back out, now that you know what Tenebris is. You can leave us forever, and nothing unpleasant will happen. We won't bother you again. That night, when we broke in, I was scared. I tried to reassure you that everything would be fine, but to be honest, I don't know if I can guarantee that. It was selfish of me to pretend Tenebris can't be dangerous. I want to apologize. It's... no... Oh, it's... 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 F no... no... I'm not gonna back out, it's fine! No, we can make this work. I know we can. No, I can handle it. I've decided I want to get to know you. Keith doesn't look as certain as you. Mm hmm Are you sure? I am. He sighs and runs a hand through his hair. Despite this, he's fighting back a smile. It's quite selfish of me that I was hoping you'd say that. I suppose I'll have no choice but to make sure you don't get hurt. Thank you, sweet baby. I pet your head, sweet baby. I should be the one saying that. Thank you for trusting and believing in us, even though you barely know us. We'll try our best to become deserving of it. You smile at his resolve. You change back to a more carefree topic for a while. So then there's this other game where I- Until the food arrives. You both fall back into silence for some time as you dig in. As long as I didn't order anything with coconut, I enjoy what I ordered. Keith was right when he said the food here is good. You're very happy with your order. He looks like he's enjoying his food as well. Or at least you think so. 
He's looking at you more than he's looking at the food on his plate. Aww. At some point, in between bites, Keith leans against his palms and glances at the orchids by the window. Did you know that green orchids are seen as a symbol of good fortune? I didn't. You follow his gaze to the green orchid he's admiring. Do you know a lot about flower symbolism? I suppose you would, since you work in a flower shop. I work at a flower shop because I love plants, though. I've always found their language fascinating. What about the pink rose? What does it symbolize? Generally, they can mean joy, gratitude, and admiration. They can be romantic, but in a gentler way. Not as intense as the red ones. But a single pink rose without thorns can also mean love at first sight. You don't remember if your rose had thorns or not, but from the way Keith looks at you with shining eyes and a gentle smile, it may have not. Oh, you'd, you'd know if it had thorns. Ugh. You finish your food, and so does Keith. He then offers to pay for both orders himself. Aww. It's because he invited you, he tells you. It doesn't seem like he's going to budge on it, so you let him. When the waitress brings back the check and sets it in front of him, Keith blinks in surprise and picks out an extra piece of paper. What's that? It's her number. Sorry, this is unexpected. Listen, friend. This is my Kool-Aid for the moment. Back off, ma'am. He gives you an apologetic look. Let's see, you want to see what he plans to do with it? You don't really care, or hunt down the waitress, how dare you, madam! That is an insult! Clearly we are, we are on an outing. I mean, obviously he's not gonna pay it any mind. It's fine, yeah, it's fine. It's not like I'm, it's not like I'm salty or anything. I don't, I don't really care. It's fine. He looks a tad distraught as you both begin to leave. He crumbles the piece of paper in his hand and throws it in a trash can on his way out of the restaurant. You're about to bid him goodbye, but you notice him nervously fidgeting in place and glancing around. Would you mind if I walked you home? Oh, sure. Is something the matter? No. I've just heard some scary rumors recently, and I'd rather make sure you stay safe on your way back. That's nice of you. So you make your way back together. However, this time he is much less chatty, he seems on edge the whole time. Every few seconds, his eyes would dart around, as if in search of something in particular. What kind of rumors did he hear to make him this worried? Keith? Are you okay? Huh? Yes, I'm fine. Are you sure? I feel like something's bothering you. It's not even dark out. Why are you so worried? Ah, uh, it's nothing. Don't worry about it. Dude, you said there's rumors and you want to walk me home. I'm going to worry about it. He smiles, but it isn't very convincing. Since it doesn't sound like he'll tell you what the actual problem is, you decide to leave it be. The rest of the way is spent in silence. You only turn to speak to him again when you've reached the door to your apartment complex. Yeah, I had fun. Why would you say just go? Ugh. Hearing that, his smile turns into a more genuine one. Yeah, that was nice. It's even better that I didn't go over and beat up that waitress. Or at least cry in her general direction. I had fun too, and I hope there'll be a next time. I'm sure there will be. I'll keep in touch. You wave goodbye to him as he leaves. As you go inside, you're hit with an odd feeling. Something is about to happen, but you aren't sure what. You, you, mean, you mean a marriage proposal? <laughs> Did you forget anything at the restaurant? You don't think so. Maybe something you should have done before you left. Did we not tip the waitress? Is she gonna come to my door and ask for a tip? You reach your door, unlock it, take off your shoes and coat, put away your keys and begin to walk around the apartment, looking for anything that might be amiss. You find nothing. Maybe Keith's behavior rubbed off on you. You just need to relax. Everything's cool. This is what you begin to do. But 20 minutes later, after you've changed clothes and made yourself busy with other things, you hear a loud ringing sound. Someone is buzzing your apartment. Mm -hmm. That's odd. You weren't expecting anyone.
Oh, wait, did I forget Tenebris? Is that what I forgot? Oh, is he mad? Or 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 is it that guy that we bumped into? It could very well be a prank, but you decide to check anyway. You begrudgingly make your way to the front door and press the top button on the intercom. The ringing stops, now allowing your voice to come through on the other end. Yes? You hear a shuffling sound, then a grunt, followed by what you believe is a man's voice shouting further away from the intercom, then silence. Mm hmm. All the anxiety you've been working on pushing away earlier is now returning. Doubled. Hello? More silence. Uh, go downstairs and, and check? Maybe, uh, like, grab a lamp and go down- Alright, let's, let's go see what this is about. It's hard to tell what's happening on the other end. You're suddenly hit by the desire to head down there and see for yourself. Just do it. You want to. Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. You put on your coat and head down. There's nobody at the entrance to the apartment building. This was pointless. It was probably just some kids playing a prank. But wait. Don't go just yet. How about checking the alley on the right? Why are you telling me what to do? I'm scared! Yeah, down that way. Keep going. Just a little further. Why are you doing this? Do you hear it? It's the sound of someone ripping something apart. It's flesh being torn. You turn the corner. <coughs> Tenebris stands over a man, drenched in blood. A wicked grin stretches over his face, opening up his mouth in an inhuman degree. In his hand, he clutches the man's internal organs. Hey, he's gonna need those! Is that that guy who I ran into? Is he getting got? Tenebris, why are you getting that man? You recognize the guy. He's the one you bumped into. He took down someone that big with his bare hands? No, he didn't just take him down. He slaughtered him. T Tenebris? He freezes on the spot. His grin fails as his eyes meet yours. Why? He was... He was going to... He stutters as he drops the bloody mess in his hands, as if burnt by it. Oh, now you got your sw you got Keith's sweater all all messed up. It's very hard to clean blood out. Why do I know that? Well, I mean, if you have some peroxide, it's not that bad, but... <laughs> the explanation isn't going to help. I can't prove I was doing it for you. Or that he wanted to hurt you. Uh, but, but, what, what, what? Run and call the police? Well, what if I don't want to do that? Well, actually, no, ma maybe you should in this situation. Yeah... You don't know how you're going to escape such a thing, but you try anyway. So you run as fast as your legs can take you, out of the alley, down the street, where there's people around to come to your aid. He's not gonna hurt you. He doesn't follow. The police don't find anything in the alley when they arrive to search it. Not even blood traces. Mm. You must have forgotten you're dealing with a fae, a creature of trickery. Oh yeah. Well... He's not going to bother you anymore. What? Safe? What do you mean, safe? What happened to my boyfriend? We can make this work! Okay, what, 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 what if I ignore it? It's only a dumb prank, you tell yourself. Or maybe someone simply pressed the wrong button by accident. Either way, there's no need to give it extra attention. You turn away from the intercom. It doesn't ring again. Mm. Eventually, the anxious feeling goes away. You do a few chores, eat dinner, take a shower. You forget about the man buzzing your apartment. Then, as you're about to start getting ready for bed, you hear a thud. Mm. It takes you a moment to register where it came from. The neighbors? But it felt more like it came from the hallway. Your heart is suddenly thumping loudly in your chest. A knot forms in your throat. What are you so afraid of? Strange noises happen all the time in a building full of people. For the second time, you make your way into the hallway. You open the door and turn on the light. There's nothing there. You're about to go back when you hear something from the kitchen. Tenebras! We talked about this! 
You squint your eyes at the darkness past the threshold. It does not give away what made the sound. It continues. As if... It's as if something is rolling on the floor. Until... Oh? Oh? Oh! That guy's never gonna get ahead in life! Whom? <laughs> I probably would just kind of stare at it and go, huh. Pun! Grab something! Anything! Your mind races. Someone's in your apartment. Someone who killed a man. And whoever it is, they're trying to toy with you before they kill you too. Why would you bring me this, I'm assuming, Tenebris? Are you like a, a kitten? You rush to the dresser in the hallway and yank out a drawer where you've hidden a big knife ever since the Tenebris incident. Now armed with a proper weapon, you step back into the living room without taking your eyes off of the kitchen entrance. The best place you can find to hide is the bathroom. After checking to make sure it's empty, with the door locked and the knife clenched tightly in your hand, you call the emergency number. Fifteen excruciating minutes later, the police arrive. They search your apartment, but no trace of any severed heads or decapitators can be found. Not even a drop of blood. There are no signs of a break-in, either. You answer all their questions, try to convince them you truly did see a man's head rolling on your floor. You're quite certain they think you're insane. Yeah. Ultimately, you're left standing alone in your apartment again. You've seen it. It was real. You're sure of it. You aren't crazy. You stay at a friend's place that night. To be continued. <laughs> okay. So I've done pretty much everything the same up until like maybe now and the date. What if what if I give Tenebris a bit more uh, a bit more attention? You find him even more intriguing now. Sweet Tenebris. You're just like a misunderstood puppy. An actual fay, right in front of you. You feel even more drawn to him than before. Who knows how many more unbelievable things you'll get to witness by sticking to his side. The two of you now walk in silence. Tenebris is rubbing the back of his neck as he looks around. He's trying to avoid looking at you. What's wrong? Nothing. I just... didn't expect to get this far. I thought you'd laugh at me or call me a liar or run away. Uh, suggest that you head back so he doesn't need to deal with the crowd. Yeah. Would you rather we left? I can see the crowds are making you uncomfortable. Tenebris glances at you, then frowns at the ground for a few seconds. Ultimately, he sighs and nods. Yeah, let's do that. I, uh, I hope I did a good job explaining. I think so. It's a lot for me to think about. But I appreciate you being honest. He nods. You make your way back in silence. You get the impression that Tenebris still wants to say something, but he remains quiet. He finally turns to you when you reach the exit to the park. Am I gonna see you again after this? Of course! Of course, Bibi. We're, we're friends now. Hey, you killed that guy. You didn't kill me. <laughs> really? Yeah, why not? He smiles. Oh, I'll see you around then. Yeah. Bye. Oh, awkward baby. Can I talk to Tenebris? Talk to him? As in, you want us to switch? Yes. <laughs> Saying it bluntly. Oh, have I been boring you that badly? Yeah, yeah it hasn't been bad. I just want to say hi and see him for a minute. Oh. He looks down, thinking it over, as a small frown forms on his face. I just want to say hi, because if we're going to make this work, we, we, we have to make this an actual love triangle. You two have to get along. Sorry, but it'll have to wait until later. I want it to be just us for a little bit longer. And I also wanted to talk to you about something. I'd rather Tenebris didn't interfere. Aww. Can I see Tenebris now? He suddenly looks as if he's been forced to squeeze an entire lemon into his mouth. Aww. Perhaps another time. 
I don't think it'd be good to let him out now. Why not? It just isn't. He sounds irritated, so you don't insist further. I'm glad I got the chance to spend time with you today. I wish you a nice rest of the day. He says this rather dryly, then leaves without giving you the chance to respond. Aww. What? Aww. What? Oh, why would I call him a jerk? No, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. As you go inside, you're hit by an odd feeling. Something is about to happen, but you aren't sure what. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's what happened. You, uh, you got some, you got something. Okay, what if I go full tenebris? Absolute tenebris this time. I, I don't care much for his looks. Even though he is a cutie patootie. Don't bother. He isn't your type. Creepy guy. Sure you can. You can give me your number. You know what? Sure. Why not? <laughs> you pull out a pen. Is it okay if I write it on the back of your hand? His smirk fades, and he looks at you as if you had just told him you have a horse in your pocket. <laughs> Wait. Really? You nod. I didn't stutter. I take the, the, the pen cap off with my teeth. It looks like it's taking him a minute to process this. He eventually holds out his hand so you can write your number on the back of it. Oh, You notice that the blue spots are present on his hands as well, and the blue parts of his skin don't smudge as you touch them. Is it not paint after all? It's a skin condition. The guy stares at his hand, as if pondering on what to do now. Aww. He's like, I don't know, I did, didn't think I'd get this far. You just did that so I'd leave you be, didn't you? No, I actually find you weirdly attractive. Yeah. Geez, some of these options are so cruel. <laughs> I think you look cool. Honestly, your boldness only stuns him further. Since it doesn't seem like there'll be further interaction between the two of you, you leave him to his disbelief and continue your walk home. Leave him with that. Welcome home, Espoir. You kind of left without giving me a chance to introduce myself, you know? The name's Tenebris. A pleasure to meet you. You begin to back away. He makes his move as well, stepping towards you. What's wrong? Don't worry. I won't hurt you. Why are you here? How did you get in? You try to keep your calm for now. Maybe you could make it back to the hallway and grab your phone from your coat. You just need to keep him distracted. Does it matter? I just wanted to talk to you some more. I'm usually not in control for a long time. Not in control? What is he even talking about? You said you like me. You don't mind me staying for a bit, do you? I would have brought you something, but there was no time. He almost seems clueless to how abnormal this situation is. It's the absolute wrong thing you should never do with an intruder and let him stay. You mull this over. Any sane person in this situation would call the cops on this lunatic. But you're not one of those sane people. <laughs> nope. Besides, he has this innocent air about him that makes you believe he genuinely means no harm. Alright, you can stay for a little bit, but then I'm gonna need you to leave. It's late, and I'm tired. Tenebris gives you a wide, creepy grin, which you assume is meant to express happiness. <laughs> oh, yeah, I promise not to hang around for too long. Okay, well, make yourself comfortable, I guess. Do you want anything to drink? Tenebris takes a seat on one of the kitchen stools and nods. The grin never leaves his face. He must be really happy you allowed him to stay. Aww. You open your fridge and name a few things you have in there. After handing him his drink and getting one for yourself, you take a seat opposite of him. This is a weird first date, but I kind of like it. It's, it's nice. It's kind of late, though. <laughs> Tenebris's face turns a slightly darker shade of blue, and his eyes somehow become even wider than they already are. Oh, you're... you're considering this a date? He seemed very confident before, but now he's suddenly become bashful. If you don't want me to, I won't. No, I mean, yes, I do want you to consider it a date, that is. Aww. 
He bites his lip, revealing a few sharp teeth. I'm not very good at this. You can't help but let out a small laugh. It's alright. I find it endearing. He opens his mouth to say something else, but winces before any sound can come out. Is something wrong? Tenebris holds his head in his hands and groans. Sorry, I have to go. He stands up and sloppily makes his way to the window. You stand up as well. Are you sure? Let me help. You can't help. It's fine. It was nice to meet you. Aww. Before you can stop him, he's jumped out of the window. Okay. Just did a papyrus, but okay. All you can do is stare in shock. You rush over to see if he's okay. You stick your head out of the window just in time to spot him running away down the street. This is the second floor. How did he do that? So many questions swim through your head. Was this guy even human? This was the second time he'd done something impossible today. The next time you see him, you're going to need him to do a lot of explaining. Or, at least, you hope to see him again, even if it's just to satiate your curiosity. Mm. You still had so many questions. If you hadn't exchanged a few messages with him after he'd left, you'd think it'd all been a dream. Yeah, definitely that. It's pretty, still pretty exciting. You can't believe your luck. How many people get to experience something crazy like this? The excitement is making you restless. What will happen next, you wonder? Hopefully not a head rolling through my kitchen the next day. Uh, what if I don't interfere? <laughs> you, I'm sorry, you, you, you can handle that Karen yourself this time. You don't want to get involved in what is currently happening. The woman continues to shout about flower arrangements and how she absolutely must have them by the end of the week. Keith's demeanor remains polite, although you do begin to see some strain in his features at one point. He eventually notices you standing behind the woman, and his cheeks turn a bit pink. She smacks her hand against the counter, causing him to flinch and return his attention to her. Okay, that would, that would, that would make me mad. This must not have been the best move on the lady's part. He takes a step back, grimacing. Are you listening? What in God's name? Uh-oh. The cool music has started. Both her and you stare in shock as his skin begins to turn blue. The edges of his mouth stretches out in wavy lines all the way to the top of his cheekbones. His eyes widen and turn purple. His brows furrow. He's hulking out! He's literally going beast mode! You recognize him. It's the guy who broke into your apartment. He snarls at the woman, giving her a full view of his sharp teeth. Get your pruny buns out of here if you don't want to get eaten alive! The woman stands there, frozen, eyes wide and mouth hanging open. She then begins to turn slowly and, wearing the same startled expression, walks to the door of the store and leaves. <laughs> Once she's gone, Tenebris looks at you. Crap! Uh... Hi. I, uh, I wasn't actually going to eat her. Good, because I was about to ask. Do you do that? Bruh. What exactly is going on? I, uh, I don't know if you've realized it yet, but I'm not human. I kind of live inside someone else's body, but, uh... He looks towards the door. You turn to look as well. The girl you saw outside before is standing there, about to come in. Eh. As long as you don't give me a reason to protect myself, or Keith, from you, I have no intention of hurting you. You nod. You can't consider it a guarantee, but at least it's something. That's not gonna stop me! I'm still gonna flirt with you aggressively! You're not going to let this keep you away. So what if he's a fae? He said he wouldn't hurt you without a good reason. You're not about to get scared and run away. You'd be missing out. Yeah. The two of you now walk in silence. Tenebris is rubbing the back of his neck as he looks around. He's trying to avoid looking at you. What's wrong? Nothing. I just didn't expect to get this far. I thought you'd laugh at me or call me a liar or run away. You're too cool for that. Tell me about yourself. 
That suggestion catches him a little off guard. He scratches his jaw and hums, trying to think of something to say. I'm in my twenties. I like video games and watching the stars. I hate liars and shallow people. Uh, and I really like sweets. That was an interesting little introduction. You decide to pick something to focus on. You like video games? Hehehe. <laughs> Mostly shooters or anything that's got a lot of violence. It helps me blow off steam, you know? You nod. Have you ever tried something more relaxing, like a farming game? Listen, Stardew Valley. Bra. Bra, seriously. <laughs> I have not met anybody who does not like Stardew Valley. It never really crossed my mind, but maybe I will. You like watching the stars? That's unexpected and really, really cute. He scratches his chin again. Yeah, that part is complicated. Sometimes I can't tell if I like it or hate it. What do you mean? It makes me weirdly emotional sometimes. Feels kind of pathetic, getting sad by yourself in the middle of the night while sitting on a roof. We all have our moments of vulnerability. I wouldn't call it pathetic. It's actually quite sensitive and sweet. Can't say I'm a fan of shallow people myself. I can't fluffing stand them. They'll go around acting like being pretty is all that matters. And they look down on anybody who doesn't fit their standards. Makes me want to punch him every time. You nod in understanding. What kind of sweets? Almost anything that's sweet, really. But I think chocolate's my favorite. I'm guessing that means chocolate would be a suitable present for you. You're gonna... You're gonna give me presents? I'll get you whatever you like, baby girl. His face lights up in such a way you'd think he'd been promised a yacht. <laughs> oh. The awkward little grin takes over his expression again. He tries to keep it in, but fails. It was only an idea, but now that I've seen your reaction, I might go through with it. I have expected you to mention murdering people as a hobby. Only sometimes. <laughs> you say it in a joking manner. It has more of an effect on him than you expected. Oh, I didn't mean it, baby. He frowns deeply and looks down. Sorry, that was a bad joke. It's fine. I know I have the tendency to scare people even when I don't mean to. Yeah, you, you, you kind of threatened to eat that lady at some point. That puzzles you. He doesn't mean to be scary. Then what's with the costume and all the makeup? I don't really think you're scary. You look cool, if you ask me. You decide to be positive regardless. Oh, I now have the option to try and cheer him up when the when the crowd is, is getting to him. Aww. He's clearly uncomfortable being given so much negative attention. Perhaps you can do something to help him feel better. There's an ice cream stand not too far ahead. <gasps> it's not really ice cream season, but the weather is pretty warm. Would you like it if I treated you to some? A chocolate ice cream? That single suggestion manages to banish every trace of displeasure from his face. He nods eagerly, reminding you of a kid about to be given a snack. Tenebris! Tenebris, stop being so precious! Ugh, they're both precious. You two make your way to the stand. Tenebris gets three scoops of chocolate ice cream, and you get two of your favorite flavors. He stares at you as you take out your wallet to pay for them. You sure you don't want me to pay for mine? Nah, I said it was my treat, didn't I? I'm gonna make my boy all happy! He shrugs and returns his focus to his ice cream as you hand the money to the vendor. Why don't we find somewhere to sit? We could look for a bench in a more remote area. You walk around some more in search of said bench. Tenebris is now in much higher spirits, despite people still staring at him. He only cares about the treat in his hand. <gasps> oh, protect his crooked smile! Eventually, you come across an empty bench at the end of one of the smaller paths. It's far away from the playgrounds, and the dead end makes it less popular with people walking their dogs or wandering arm in arm with their partners. Tenebris is already halfway done with his ice cream by the time he sits down. <laughs> Did you eat it whole or something? I don't know if it's a good idea to eat that so quickly. Huh? This is me eating it slowly. I usually take bites out of it. And you don't get brain freeze? Or does he pass all that down to Keith? What's that? 
You know, when you bite into something very cold and your head hurts for a little while? I've never had that happen. You're one of the lucky ones, then. Since you can't say the same thing about yourself, you return to slowly eating your ice cream. However, you notice him stealing glances at it every once in a while. <laughs> Sir! You... You want some? <laughs> Do you want to try mine? He hesitates. I got strawberry. I hope you don't mind that. Can I? You already paid for both. I don't mind. It's just a taste. Okay, then. Don't mind if I do. You hold it out to him. His hand comes to rest over yours as he tilts it towards his face and leans in to take a small bite. I have expected him to, like, take a whole chunk out of it. Well, do you like it? Chocolate is still the best, but this ain't bad either. Really? So not even an indirect kiss from me can beat your favorite flavor? Huh? He looks between your face and the ice cream. His cheeks gradually turn a bright shade of purple as his gaze finally settles on your lips. Oh, <laughs> Um, well, yeah, I probably would just laugh. <laughs> you can't help but laugh at his cute reaction. Don't laugh. You tricked me. How did I trick you? I just offered ice cream. He glances off to the side. You can't make out what he mumbles under his breath. Something about kisses. You take pity on him and change the subject. The conversation continues for a while, although Tenebris doesn't always understand certain figures of speech and insinuations. He doesn't let that stop him from enjoying it. He just needs to stop you from time to time to ask what you actually mean to say. Aww. He tells you about the stray cats he feeds in the evenings and his favorite spot in the forest. As expected, he prefers nature and animals over people. Although he doesn't strike you as unfriendly, either. Maybe just a tad awkward. Oh. Eventually, you decide it's about time you headed back, so you start making your way out of the park. Say... Yes? How can you tell when you're on a date? You smile, knowing where this is going. It helps to ask the person, but it usually is a date if two people romantically interested in each other are going out together. So... Could this be considered a date? I'd say so. Oh, good. Great. He smiles, sheepishly, as he rubs the back of his neck. You've reached the end of the park. All that's left is to say goodbye. I'll look forward to future dates. <gasps> Kissy poo! I kiss him on the cheek. Yay, smooches! You quickly dart closer to him, and gently grab his chin to plant a kiss on his cheek. His hand comes to rest on the spot your lips touched after you pulled away. He's become a little purple again. Aww. Right. Yeah. You wave to him as you go. See ya! He waves back, a dreamy smile spreading over his face. Aww. Then comes the scuttling sound again. What? Why? You freeze. It wasn't in your imagination. It's coming from the corner of the room. Slowly, you turn your head. Ah! Editor may be sure to put in arachnophobia. Warning. On there. Ah! Oh yeah, oh yeah, this playthrough I picked the spider plant. Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? I didn't think the, the plants, the plant choices matter, but why are you doing that? Did I just invite something into my into my house like gosh darn pizzeria simulator? It's there, in the upper corner, stretching over your walls, a horrific spider-like creature. Little glowing orbs peek at you from the depths of what looks like a pot, as long, thin legs grip the walls. Get down from there. Stop that. Don't do that. Scream. Look for what? Turn on the light. Maybe it's just a trick of the light. That can't be right. Is there really a gigantic spider in your living room? Despite the slight anxiety it caused you, you convince yourself to get up and turn on the light. Be hilarious if it actually was. When you look back at the same spot, there is no monster there. Only the spider plant sits in its pot on the floor, like any plant should. Okay. Okay. 
Either there was like a trick of the light and the reflection of the shadow was put up on the ceiling, or we're dealing with a demonic entity. You must have been seeing things after waking up in the dark all of a sudden. <laughs> oh. oh, okay, I have a different, uh... I can actually do something besides run and tell the police. Yeah, I, th th that guy did seem kind of weird. Thank you for splattering his insides all, all about the alley. I will believe him. You thought he was going to harm me? Tenebris looks you up and down, probably wondering what you're doing still standing there instead of running away and screaming. Uh, yeah. He's been following you around for a while. He had an axe in his backpack, and he buzzed your apartment. A giggle escapes you. You muffle it with your fist, trying to keep it together. Like, <laughs> you, you slaughtered someone for me? Aw, you... Oh, you rapscallion, you. <laughs> Did Keith somehow know about this? You remember how anxious he was earlier, poor thing. Oh, yeah. He did. Um, why aren't you freaking out? There's a dead person in front of you. I killed him. You did? <laughs> All for little old me. I admit I'm quite excited. Oh, would you like it better if I pretended to be scared? Why am I just here? <laughs> That's exactly what I just said. <laughs> no, I'm just kind of confused. You smile sweetly. The Fae can't lie, can they? So you're telling the truth when you say you did it for my sake. Ah, uh, yeah, you got got him there. Do you need... <laughs> <Do> you... <laughs> Goodness, Espoir. Do you need help getting rid of the body? blinks innocently. Just tenebrous at this point is like, y you've done this before, haven't you? Should I be scared? Huh? No, I'm fine. We have our methods. Are you, are you going to eat him? I see. In that case, I'll wait for you inside. You can come wash off the blood if you like. Are you sure? You're not scared of me at all? Dude, I wrote down my phone number on your hand the second, the millisecond we met each other. You should be glad I'm not handing you a wedding ring. Of course not, silly. I'm ecstatic. You can't keep me waiting for long, okay? You blow him a little kiss as you go, practically skipping to your apartment. Oh, I see. I'm insane. <laughs> but happy. A dreamy sigh escapes you as you close the door behind you. You try to wait patiently, but your excitement is so hard to contain. <laughs> the image of him covered in blood with that twisted smile on his face keeps coming back to you and making your heart beat faster. <laughs> he looks so handsome, standing over the corpse of a man that wanted to hurt you. Aww, this espoir is so happy. Another giggle escapes you. Keith? Keith, run! Run! <laughs> He appears in your kitchen 20 minutes later, a bag in hand. You rush in as soon as you hear him coming. That was fast. What did you do with the body in such a short amount of time? I took it to the woods and put a charm on the area where I buried it. Anyone who goes looking for it there will be walking in circles. You can do that? It sounds convenient. What's in the bag? Clothes. Keith hid them in the area earlier today. Hmm, smart. You go up to him, eyeing him up and down. He still looks a little wary, but you pay it no mind. Instead, you grab him by the sweater and pull him towards you. It'll be a while before it dries. The blood. The smell is still so strong. Calm down, insane espoir! You run your hands over his chest, making your way to his neck, then his face. Uh-oh. And now you need to wash it off. Truly a shame. Seeing you like this, it makes me burn. Espoir, calm down! Get the fire extinguisher, she's getting too hot! He lets out a breath. His face is close enough for it to hit your skin. The bag drops to the floor. You watch him with satisfaction as his cheeks turn purple. I could put off washing it for a bit longer. His eyes trail down to your lips. He inches closer. What do you mean it makes you burn? Oh no! Is somebody about to get kissy-pooed? Without warning, you shove him against the wall. 
He grunts as his back hits it. Before he can mutter another inquiry, your lips crash over his. He hums in surprise. However, moments later, his arms are around you, pulling you closer. His kisses are clumsy, yet eager in return. Aww. Mwah! Good night, everybody! Hey, now seems like the perfect time to remind you of that warning at the beginning of this video that this game is meant for adults, and, uh... And if you would like to see it further, you can check out the uncut version on my adult Patreon. Okay, what if what if I don't take it further? What, what if I do the sensible thing <laughs> and not get hot over some blood spatter? His breathing has become heavier by the time you pull away, and the adorable blush from earlier has intensified. You smile. Does that answer your question? I, uh... I guess so. He bashfully avoids your gaze. It's such a strong contrast to the bloodthirsty expression he was making earlier, standing over that corpse. You feel so lucky that you get to witness both. Aww. Come on, let's get you cleaned up. You give him space to push himself off the wall and pick up his clothes from where he dropped them. Then you give him a towel and show him where the bathroom is. He doesn't take long, and when he comes out, he's no longer wearing the beige and pastels that you associate with Keith. The change of clothes is his usual dark tones, yet it does kind of match his, his color palette better. There you go. The blood looked good on you, but now you look more like yourself. You pat the spot next to you on the couch. Come here, let me dry your hair. <gasps> I get to brushy his hair? <gasps> he does as you ask. You plug in the hair dryer and begin your work. Did you only kiss me because of the blood? The question takes you by surprise. What a silly thing to ask. <laughs> of course not. I can't possibly think of you without feeling weak in the knees. You're so enticing, so handsome, so captivating. I mean, he is. You gently run your fingers through his hair. But seeing you like that and knowing you'd go so far just for me. You sigh dreamily and wrap your arms around him. It smells like your shampoo and body wash. Oh no. Now I am the Yandere. <laughs> it's making me adore you even more. The tips of his ears turn purple again. You kiss one, making him yelp. You wouldn't do this for anybody else, would you? Yandere espoir. Your voice drops to a whisper at the last word. Last two words. Oh, so it's more like... You wouldn't do this for anybody else, would you? <laughs> Full on crazy. Myself, you, and Keith are the only ones I've ever done it for. I wouldn't do it for just anybody. You hum, satisfied, and let him go to resume drying his hair. As the minutes pass, Tenebris begins to relax more and more. By the time his hair is almost dry, he's leaning into your touch. Oh. Do you like having your hair touched? I like it when you do it. You gently knead through his soft curls. A smile spreads over your face. You don't feel like a human. Huh? It seems he enjoys asking blunt questions that come out of seemingly nowhere. Humans are distrusting, paranoid, and easily frightened. Even the naive ones would be afraid if they saw someone standing over a fresh corpse. Oh, you're still hung up on that? Then you can say some humans are somewhat twisted. I'm just happy you're the same. It seems too good to be true. I can prove it, if you'd like. Just tell me who. Maybe someone who's been bothering you or Keith. Perhaps that rude lady at the flower shop. I could get rid of her for you. No, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> you plant a kiss on top of his head and turn off the hairdryer. I want to hair dry a cute boy's hair. All done. He turns around to face you. Thanks. Do you want me to leave now? You can stay longer. Maybe even overnight. You can use the couch if you don't feel comfortable sleeping in bed with me. <laughs> You'd let me sleep in your bed? His eyes shine with excitement. Only sleeping, but yes, if you want to. Do I get more kisses if I do? You laugh. <laughs> sure. He grins happily, revealing his sharp teeth. 
Seeing it makes you feel like you've won something valuable. What? Aw, what's so bad about that ending? Well, okay. I'm a psycho. <laughs> I'm a psycho with no sense of self-preservation. Alright, alright. I get it. Okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm trying to play both sides both sides now. I, uh, I got Keith's, or asked for Keith's phone number, and also gave Tenebris my phone number, and now he shows up in my kitchen! There is something incredibly deranged in his gaze. He pushes himself off the counter. You're about to take a step back, but you barely manage to move your foot before the guy is suddenly right in front of you. He slams you against the wall, pinning you in place. His entire face is twitching horribly. You like me, right? You said so. Yeah, I did. There's so much excitement in his voice. Ah, but you also like him. What are you talking about? Let go. You try to struggle. His grip tightens. It's hurting you. It's not fair, Espoir. You even know his name. You never bothered to ask mine. Twitch. Twitch. Why did you ask for his number, and then gave me yours? Are you some kind of player? Judging by my sixty fictional husbands, yes. I... You're cut off by his frustrated groan. Uh, he won't shut up. He won't shut up. He clenches his teeth as his hands press harder against your shoulders. It hurts really bad. If he keeps this up, he's going to break your shoulders. No, not my shoulder blades. Twitch, twitch, twitch. His face begins to change. The eyes shrink down. The mouth reverts to a normal shape. The skin turns rosy. You're shocked to see the florist you met yesterday take the place of this thing from before. Oh no! He's still cute. Keith? Keith looks almost giddy. His smile is no less deranged than that of the blue-skinned guy. He lets out a giggle, one that sends shivers through your entire body. You don't feel any less threatened. You don't mind this, Espoir, do you? We've waited so long for someone like you. You can't tell what's happening right now. Is this some kind of nightmare? What you're witnessing shouldn't be possible in reality. They always leave me. But you're going to stay, because you like us both. I mean, yeah, we can make this work. You try to break free again, but the arms holding you in place won't budge. Looking down at them, you notice his hands are still blue. It has Keith's face, but that thing from before is still holding you in place. What? What do you want? Stay with me. Twitch? One side of his mouth begins to stretch again. It goes up and up until it stops right below his eye. Blue spots start to reappear like bruises left by invisible punches. Stay, Stay with, with me. me. The right eye is widening again. Twitch. Twitch. You're not sure which one is talking anymore. Stay, Stay with, with us. us. The voices become uneven. At parts, you can hear Keith's voice, and somewhere at the back, and once every two words, the other one joins in. We will, we will be, be so, so happy, happy together. together. We will we'll never, never leave, leave each, each other's, other's side. Oh! Your legs are turning into mush. You want to scream, but no sound is coming out. Never leave us, Espoir. We'll, we'll be together, together until, until our bodies rot together, together in a coffin, coffin until, until, the until the world ends, until there's nothing left but dust. Okay, fellas? Listen, listen. Guys! They laugh and pant, leaning in close to your face. The next sentence comes in a whisper. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Don't, Don't close, close the, the game. game. Ah, ah, that sure is a bad end. That that's pretty that's a bit pretty bad crazy end. We can make this work though, guys. Don't be crazy. Okay, fine. What if what if I don't want neither y'all? <laughs> you don't care much for his looks. 
I mean, he is adorable and cute as a button, but I'm just gonna resist that. You know what? You're not getting my number either. Nope. Mm -mm. Neither of you. <laughs> Other than that one odd encounter with the cosplayer guy, today has been rather normal. Still, you're glad to be back. Perhaps you'll order some food. You're not really in the mood to cook dinner. Your mind is going over potential takeout options as you remove your coat and shoes, then make your way to your living room. You haven't a clue about the size of the bullet you just dodged. <laughs> the greatest ending. The, no thanks, I don't feel like getting involved. No, mm -mm. You can keep all that to yourselves. Oh boy. I can... I can be very mean to Keith during our date. I'm sorry, Keith. What if I tell him I don't... I know what this pink rose means. I don't want it. Tell him you don't like it. Uh, I'm sorry, Keith. I'm only doing it for the gram. I don't mean it. I don't like roses. Oh. His smile withers. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I guess I should have asked what kind of flowers you like. I'll do better next time, if you decide there will be one. He pushes his smile back in place. Shall we go? You lock your door and make your way out of the building, Keith at your side. On the way to the bus station, he stops in front of an old lady and asks her if she'd like the rose. The woman accepts it happily and calls him a sweet young man. Aww. When he returns to you, he seems a little happier. He even begins to make small talk for the rest of the way. Aww. Yes, I name all my plants, though I suppose not everyone does that. No, that's weird. Why would you name a plant? Said horrible, horrible, evil espoir. Keith doesn't argue with you, but visibly deflates. Your words must have bothered him a bit. Silence falls between the two of you for a little while. I'm sorry, Keith. You like romance? That's rare for a guy. Is that a bad thing? Kind of. It really isn't. I guess it is. That night, when he broke in, I was scared. I tried to reassure you that everything would be fine, but to be honest, I don't know if I can guarantee that. It was selfish of me to pretend Tenebris can't be dangerous. I want to apologize. He's right. It's not worth the risk. Even though it kind of is. You think of the way your heart raced as you entered your apartment and found a strange man inside. One who'd somehow known where you lived and had gotten there before you. Oh yeah. Despite just having met you. Yeah, he did get there before me. Ooh. You think of the whispers in the shadows and the shuffling. The restless nights. The paranoia. Perhaps it's time for the excitement to end before you put yourself in actual danger. Oh. You nod and begin to stand up. You're right. Maybe it is too much. The look on Keith's face is unreadable at first. He stares at you, emptily. Em 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 empty de Devoid of emotion. But then his lips stretched into a relieved smile. Wait, did you want that? It was brief, but... I'm glad to have met you. Thank you for giving us a chance. We promise not to bother you again. You don't know what to say. Was it pleasant? Not really. You open your mouth to say something, but end up repeating the nod from earlier. Goodbye, Keith. Oh, I escaped them. Oh, sad, but ah, heartbroken. What if I'm, what if I'm mean to Tenebris as well? Yeah, I'll give you my number, but you should shut up and be grateful that I bothered with your ugly, but very strangely attractive behind. The guy was probably used to being given wrong numbers, or being blocked as soon as he sent the first text. You might want to look in the mirror before you ask for my number, dude. Of course I'm trying to get rid of you. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, as if. Ah. Uh, cool guy asking for my number. Ah. Uh. You decide to make a run for it without actually running. Speed walking will do for now. To your relief, he doesn't follow. Welcome home, Espoir. You know, you kind of ticked me off a little with your attitude earlier. 
You begin to back away, your heart hammering in your chest. When did he get in your apartment? You could have sworn you left him behind. Yeah, how did you, how, how did you get here? How do you know where I live? I've been having a really bad week. Your mean gesture kind of threw me off the edge there. He's smiling, but his eyes are threatening. There's something twisted in them. Oh, I made him mad. Oh, no. He pushes himself off the counter and starts walking towards you. Oh, no. Don't walk towards me menacingly with intent. <laughs> Adrenaline takes over your body. You throw... <laughs> <laughs> you throw a chair in his way and make a dash for the hallway. <laughs> your mind is racing. Your phone is still in your coat's pocket, and the coat is in the hangar in the front door. If you could grab it, and then make it out of the apartment, you'll have a way to call the police. But you only manage to take one or two steps outside the kitchen before something heavy lands on your back, sending you crashing to the ground. Ooh. The heavy weight keeps you pressed against the tiled floor. Oh no! A hand grabs a hold of your hair and pulls your head up. A pair of purple eyes meet yours. You hear the guy whisper in your ear as he leans in close. Rude little puppies like you need to be punished. Okay, yeah, I was, I was being rude. I was being rude. I understand. Fully deserve it. You open your mouth to scream, but before the sound can leave your throat, something hits the back of your head, and your vision goes black. Rude. How very rude. But then again, I was rude, so I kind of deserved it. But still, you shouldn't be coming up to people without a, a hello and like, can I get your number? <laughs> I got punished. Whoops. What if I try to go completely as much Keith as I possibly can? Because I got to have some fun with Tenebris. Maybe I could spend some time and learn more about Sweet Keith. Will you give me your number this time? Wait, um, is there any chance I could get your number this time? Of course, it's still no pressure. He stops and frowns. You still want my number? After all this? Yeah, kind of. Is that weird? I've already done the playthrough when I, where I was weird. I don't want to give up on you because of the other guy. Oh, wait, really? I, I mean, of course I'll give you my number. You chuckle at his little outburst. Do you have any paper and a pen? You nod and head into your living room to look for the objects. A minute later, you return with them in hand. Keith quickly jots down his phone number. He adds his name and draws a little heart next to it before handing it to you. Oh. You take it, pleased with yourself. Oh. Take care on your way back. It's dark. I'll text you later to see if you made it safely. All right. Don't worry. I'll be okay. Good night, Espoir. Good night, Keith. Oh. And with that, he's gone. You managed to get that number in the end. It remains to be seen what it will cost you. Mm -mm. What if I say... It's all right. I'm not scared of him. I'm not scared of that cutie pie. Although Tenebris did manage to frighten you earlier by breaking in, you feel more confident now that you know a bit more about him. It's fine. He doesn't scare me that much. Keith looks at you as if you've grown a second head. He... he doesn't? No, I won't go down that easily. But if I feel threatened again, I'm not letting you get away with it a second time. Somebody's getting punched in the stomach. <laughs> I don't know which one of you two it's gonna be. He appears to be both scared and impressed. Y yes of course. Ah, uh, but I should go now. I'm still bothering you at such a late hour. I'm sorry for everything, again. Oh, Can't be mad at that face! Oh, alright. You can go. He's right. It is getting pretty late, and you probably shouldn't keep him around much longer. Yeah, don't worry about it. Tell Tenebris to try the doorbell next time. N next time? Yes. Though I'm still wary of him, I wouldn't mind seeing you again. Keith suddenly looks like a child on Christmas morning, who just found out the biggest present under the tree has his name on it. Aww. I would love that too, if you mean that. I'm usually at the flower shop from Tuesday to Saturday between 7am and 3pm. He's so happy. All right, I'll keep that in mind. 
Have a good evening. You too. Oh, cute. This whole thing has been really odd, but part of you is excited to see what'll happen next. A person possessed by some sort of entity, huh? Oh, I know Tenebris is uncomfortable, but maybe if he does switch with Keith, he'll he'll be he'll feel better. What's the point of sticking around right now, though? You can let Keith out while we're in the park and switch again when we leave. Of course you'd say that. It's always so much easier to have Keith around instead of me. That's not... Ugh, forget it. I'm going home. He turns around and goes in the opposite direction at a walking speed you didn't know anybody was capable of. You're left to find your way out of the park on your own. I'm sorry, Tenny. I'm sorry. The food is alright. It's not phenomenal, but it tastes decent. Do you like it? It's alright. Not exactly the way I usually like it. Oh, would you like to try mine? You eye his food. It does look good, objectively speaking. Yes! <laughs> Sharing off the same fork, it's like indirectly kissing. You expect him to just push his plate closer, but instead, Keith stabs his fork into a potato and holds it out in front of your face with a big smile on his face. Oh, oh how sweet. Open wide. You hesitate, but ultimately indulge him. It tastes good. That's a dish even I can make. Hmm. It must show on your face that you enjoy it, because he immediately feeds you another. He seems to enjoy feeding you more than he was enjoying eating it himself. You have to stop him at one point and return to your meal, otherwise he may have slowly fed you his entire plate. Oh. Okay, I've tried and tried and tried. It's been like half an hour. I will get Keith's good ending that I'm going to have to put on my Patreon, most likely. This is kind of fascinating. I'm gonna be honest. This situation is odd, but also kind of fascinating. Huh? I've never seen anything like it. Is he some sort of demon? You find us fascinating? You seem to have left him speechless. Oh, Sorry. Was that offensive? I really wasn't... No, no, it's okay. I was just shocked. People usually tell me to stay away from them or... Make sure they never have to see Tenebris again. How did your parents deal with this? But no, I don't think he's a demon. You'll have to ask him for a proper explanation if you really want one. I'm not very good at it. You notice a little smile keeps tugging at the corners of his lips as he speaks. Aww. Ah, but I should go now. I'm still bothering you at such a late hour. I'm sorry for everything, again. <laughs> Trying to be nice to, uh, to, to Keith. I now have the option to, uh, this enrages you. Yeah, well, it kind of did. Miss, do you not see that we are on a date? Ah, oh, the absolute rudest. I am flames, flames on the side of my face. <laughs> flames on the side of my face. <laughs> You freeze. You knew it. She's been checking him out. That skank. Ugh. That hussy. Ugh. Who does she think she is, hitting on the guy who is clearly on a date with you? You grit your fists as your entire body tenses. Keith notices this. I don't know if this is going to get me the good end with Keith, but madam, I must have a word with you. And it'll probably be more like, why, why would you do that? We were on a date. Why would you do that? Because <laughs> I'm really not that confrontational. Oh, but don't worry. I really have no plan of using it. Here. He hands the piece of paper over to you. You can get rid of it yourself if you'd like. You stare down at the piece of paper, emptily. Then your mouth twists into a sweet smile. Isn't he just perfect? So handsome. So charming. So sweet. You close your fist, crumpling the paper. Yes, you will get rid of... it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh! Thank you. Espoir? 
The two of you continue to chat as you leave the restaurant. You mimic throwing away the paper into a nearby bin. Why are you mimicking throwing the paper into a bin? Then quickly stuff it inside your pocket. Keith doesn't notice. Espoir, don't be crazy. Don't be crazy. You press a kiss against his cheek before bidding him farewell. He wants to walk you home, but you refuse. You need to stop by a friend's place, you tell him. He buys it. He's your newfound treasure, and you plan on making sure he stays yours. This restaurant must be a place he likes a lot, one he most likely revisits. You'll make sure it is worthy of him. Oh no! I'm crazy! <laughs> It's been a few days since your date with Keith. He sounds surprised, but happy when you suggest a dinner date. He insists that you have it at his place, so he can show off his cooking to you. Aww. Who are you to deny him that pleasure? The smile will not leave your face as you're waiting in front of his door. You've made sure to dress up. Your heart is beating fiercely in your chest as it opens, and Keith appears in the doorway. Good evening. I just finished setting everything up. Come in. His apartment looks very clean and tidy. The decor has the same air as Keith's usual fashion style. Smart, a little old-fashioned, cozy. You're not surprised to find how many books he has filling up the shelves in the living room, or the amount of plants to be found nearly everywhere you look. Oh, he's so cozy. Your place looks so nice. It's very... you. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Food and drinks await you on the coffee table by the sofa. You both sit down. Did you make all this yourself? Of course. I promised I'd impress you with my cooking skills. You can't help but swoon. Your darling is so skilled, and he did this just for you. You may as well melt on this couch. Aren't you the luckiest person in the world? You've succeeded. But you haven't even tasted it yet. I can already tell I'll love it, since you made it. To prove yourself, you grab a fork and try the food. You weren't wrong. It does taste good. You make the fact known with a satisfied hum. Mmm, told you. Keith laughs. It's the sweetest sound you could ever hear. You want to hear it more and more. You begin to chat while you eat. He tries to ask about what you've done the past few days. Yes, yeah, what? What have you been doing these past few days? But you keep your answer short. Instead, you want to know about him. What has he been doing? What books have he been reading? Did anybody bother him? Did anybody else catch his eye? He's a little taken aback by all the questions, but he answers them patiently, with that lovely smile of his constantly present. You know, Keith, dear, I really wanted to see you, but I also wanted to talk to you about something. What is it? I've never met someone quite like you. You make me restless, feverish. You make me feel like I'm perfectly happy if you and I were the only people left in this world. Oh no. Where, where does Tenebris fit in with all this crazy espoir? You take his hand in yours. You watch his brows rise as your heart hammers in your chest. Nobody else would be able to make me do the things you make me do. You reveal a small red box, which you plant in the middle of his palm. What's this? Open it! His free hand hovers over the lid, trembling. His fingers curl around it and pry it open. Inside is a single tooth, resting on a white cushion that would have normally held jewelry, a few dark spots surround it. The waitress that gave you her number. I kept a little part of her as a trophy. I wanted to prove my love for you and dispose of a nuisance at the same time. <laughs> oh no, she's yandere. Oh no. The trembling of his hands gets worse. His shoulders also begin to shake. A smile forms on his face, until a wave of giggles escapes his lips. The grip he has on the box becomes so tight that his fingers turn pale. Keith? <laughs> I'm sorry, I just... <laughs> the laughter becomes louder. 
Oh no, he's crazy too. We're both crazy. Tenebris is just like, um, I'm just gonna stay here. Of course it makes sense that this is what happened. He giggles and giggles. All you can do is stare, dumbfounded. Until it finally dies out. He closes the box and sets it down on the table. Mm, thank you, my dear. Did you make sure to hide her well? Of course, they'll never find her. Good. He caresses your cheek. You see relief in his gaze, but also sadness. Are you unhappy with my gift? No, my love. You have no idea what service you've done for me. I just wish you didn't need to. The nickname he uses causes your heart to skip a beat. <laughs> it's nothing, really. I'd do it a million times if I had to. You rest your hand over his. I want to be with you. Me too. More than you can imagine. He leans in. When your lips meet, you feel like you're finally whole. It's soft, warm, comforting. His thumb rubs your cheek. You wrap your arms around him. <laughs> oh. Keith pulls himself away, grasping for air when you finally release him. <laughs> Don't kill him, insane espoir. Oh, gosh, I'm sorry. He laughs. Don't worry about it. I take it you enjoyed that. You return his smile, still panting. I did. We can go again once you've rested, possibly in a more comfortable spot. Oh, yes, please. He chuckles. Once you've recovered a little, he offers you his hand to help you off the couch. You take it. It feels like it's your birthday as you follow him to the bedroom. Bad end. Selfish. Now, hold on a second. That lady was moving out on my Kool-Aid. We were clearly on a date. The date was going very well. And then she thinks she can just be all like, ooh, hello, and give him his number. Okay, what if I what if I stop there and and don't uh, have to put the whole scene on my Patreon, my adult Patreon? There's a link in the description. You break away from the kiss, but not before giving him one last peck. He smiles. You may as well be on cloud nine. While she rots in heck, ma'am. Who do you think you are? He leans back against the couch and brings you along with him. The way he looks at you, with so much adoration, is the greatest reward you could have ever wished for. Oh, but you still enjoyed ripping that pretty, luscious hair off her scalp as she begged you to stop. Can I stay over tonight? Just for cuddles. I want to be close to you. I'd love that. You sit together for some time, chatting, declaring your love for one another, until it gets late and it's time to get everything tidied up. You want to help him clean everything up, but he insists that you let him do it alone. You're a guest, he says. Isn't he so sweet? And to think, you could have been replaced by that skank! That poor excuse of a human. That rotting pile of bones left to be eaten by worms beneath the dirt. <laughs> he offers you some of his clothes to sleep in. You're overjoyed. Oh, I am staying the night. Yippee! Sleep, sleepover, murder sleepover. Everything smells like him, or the specific products he uses. I bet he smells amazing, actually. The clothes, the sheets on his bed, the blankets, the pillows, they smell like flowers and a hint of mint. You'd kill a hundred more people if this was the reward. You'd bathe in their blood and decorate the streets with their guts just for a moment of tenderness with him. Oh no! I'm so crazy! He smiles as he enters the bedroom to find you already nestled in blankets in the bed. He's changed into a gray t-shirt and pajama pants. I'm glad to see you've already made yourself comfortable. I'd be even more comfortable if you joined me. Of course. Sorry to keep you waiting. He plops onto the bed beside you. You open up the cocoon of blankets you've made for yourself and pull him in. He giggles in response, wrapping himself around you and nuzzling into your chest. 
at least he's into it. That That's nice, at least. We can be crazy together. Your heart thumps excitedly. He can probably hear it. You run your hand through his soft curls. You feel like you've won tonight. That end. Selfish. Well, yeah, but again, she was moving in on my Kool-Aid. I think... I think... I think that's all the endings. <laughs> that, that one was really hard to get. Took me a couple tries, but... This is just the demo. <laughs> well, anyway, that was the game Duality, and keep in mind that this game is made for adults. I'm glad that we know a little bit more about Tenebris and what he actually is, and possibly the relationship between the two. Does that last ending mean that Keith is... Keith is actually kind of crazy? <gasps> is Keith actually the weird one and Tenebris is the nice one? <gasps> but we will have to see. There will be a link in the description where you can follow this developer for any more development. And if you like seeing me play games like this, you can hit the like button as it actually really helps out my channel a whole bunch. And if you really like seeing me be insane, you can subscribe. <laughs> and I'd love to know what you think in the comments. Which, which boyo would be your favorite? There will be, according to the developer, a polyamory... We can make this work route. That will be in the full game. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Take care of yourself, have a great night, and remember, there is always hope. <laughs>